All right, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, thank you for having me. Okay, so when we talk about the HF Group, and of course you've been at the helm for a, over a year now, yeah. roughly, right? Um, we've seen that the losses have decreased over the past years. We've seen 2018 Q3, you know, that loss of 322 million pre-tax. Yeah. If we compare to Q3 2019 at 81 million, we have seen that there's constant, consistent improvement in the numbers. Um, what has been the strategy so far? What are you expecting in this year, you know, in terms of continuing this momentum and your strategy really to keep pushing that further? Okay. First of all, thank you very much uh, for, for having me. Um, and the best way to look at that is to look at where, you know, where are we coming from as an organization. In 2018, we had, a, we had a difficult year. We had losses over 600 million. Then 2019, we came up with a strategy to turn around the organization. Uh, and you're right, I actually, I, I've been here for about a year now. So what we've done over the last year, first of all, is that we got into this massive uh, uh, collections effort to mm -hmm. just get make sure that we actually cure the the non-performing loan loan book uh, that we had and uh, 2019 we actually collected three billion shillings from from that entire entire loan book obviously that helped a lot to just get cash to the bank and to be able to do to other things such as lending and and, and 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 such the second thing is that we actually built other businesses what we call engines of growth so for instance now we have got sme banking we have personal banking, we have diaspora banking, we have institutional banking, and these businesses have started bringing in income. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, last year, our last year performance, even as at quarter three, uh, in terms of non-funded income, we had actually doubled our, 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 our income. Uh, and also, we also worked on the organization of our balance sheet to just make sure that our cost, especially the cost on the funding side, mm -hmm. has, has significantly reduced. Last year, we paid out close to 6 billion shillings to the different lenders, including the bond. And obviously, that brought in a lot of savings, uh, including also the efficiency, just improving efficiency, our cost to serve. And we saw that improve every month last year uh, until such a time when we are saying now we are not worried about the problems of the past anymore. Mm. We are actually thinking about the future now. So it's clearly been a very strong, you know, bounce back uh, with under under your leadership. Um, if we look at one of the recent developments as of Jan, we saw that the Housing Finance Development and Investment Limited um, section was pretty much uh, set to be dissolved. You said that you'll finish the current projects and then not take on further, right? So what really was the biggest factor influencing that particular decision? Okay, efficiency. Mm. Efficiency is the word. If you look at what we are doing on the HFDI side. Just, just to give a bit of background, H HFC and HFDI are two subsidiaries of the same organization, HF Group. But you, you, you find that HFC built houses, unsold houses, and also does mortgages. Mm -hmm. HFDI builds houses and sells houses. And, and if you look at that, you, you get a sense that there is actually quite a bit of duplication. So you've mm. got these subsidiaries doing a lot of the same. So what we have done is actually then to move assets, certain assets and liabilities of HFDI to HFC. And on that basis also we have moved the, the operations, the business operations of HFDI to HFC. HFDI will not die. It will actually continue to be there. But the day-to-day -day operations of it move or have been merged to HFC. That, that means several things. We've had a lot of capital sitting on HFDI that is primarily idle, that is actually idle. So what we are doing is then we are going to, um, that, that capital we can use it a lot on the HFC side, which is the bank side. And then we create now one uniform unit mm. that actually does uh, what both are doing. But we've also said that we are not going to start doing, to do construction projects ourselves as an organization. We are going to, to focus on building partnerships with the organizations and institutions that are actually developing those houses. And we are going to focus more on the banking side of things, uh, the banking side of things, which we are really, really good at. So that, that's essentially the change that means. So efficiency, capital optimization, and also just making sure that we do what we are really best, uh, best equipped to do. So that's interesting. A lot to unpack there. So before I even get to the affordable housing, yeah. um, you know, topic that I, that I really want to ask you about, uh, you've talked about banking, of course, being the focus. We talk about digitization, and we've seen 
recently, uh, over the past two years or so, that a lot of uh, banks are coming together and mm. forming one larger unit, as yeah. we've seen, um, so that there's, there's that sort of uh, strength that's yeah. acquired when, yeah. when you're two. Um, wh where do you see that trend, you know, how does it influence the space? And also with the digitization wave, what are you doing to make sure that you're leveraging on that to be on top? Okay, so first of all, to answer your first question, um, yes, you are going to see a lot more uh, of that, you know, uh, businesses coming together to, be, to build bigger businesses. We, we don't have immediate plans to do that ourselves. Uh, we believe that we, there's a lot of work we need to do to get ourselves better. We have got a lot of, a, lo a lot of room to be much more efficient uh, and, and, and consolidate our businesses so that, first of all, we, internally we are actually fit for growth. Uh, that's uh, that, that's uh, the first thing. But currently, turning now to the digital conversation, um, that will continue to power growth both in the industry and also within HF. Mm. Uh, if you look at uh, the approach we have taken, we are calling it digital first. Digital first means that all the solutions that we are building are actually, we build the digital version of it first, and then the analog version, if mm. we have to. Okay. Uh, and that's how come we have come with solutions such as WhatsApp banking, we've got Whiz, which is award winning, We've got now online banking. We are very active on bots in terms of communications to customers and even on social media. That will, that will continue to grow. How we see it from where we sit is that there's got about three, three angles. The first angle is the angle of, of, of um, service. You know, how do you make sure that customers can be able to access uh, products faster, more efficiently? They can be able to self-help themselves. You know, that whole access and so we, we, are, we are creating opportunities for customers to access the bank wherever they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we believe we are leading that space. The second thing that we are doing is, is, is to make sure that, for instance, you are able to then not only just provide that service or that, that, that service, but also the, the user experience. That the customer can actually, the, the ease of doing business, that you can actually do that in two, 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 two clicks, clicks mm. and you're able to access your service. For instance, today, you can be able to send an RTG, an RTGS from here to your ba an, to another bank in like three th three clicks, you know, and and that's done. You can be able to, uh, you, you know, access services. For instance, you can be able to do what else um, uh, on the WhatsApp banking. Then, just as you are chatting, you don't have to leave WhatsApp banking. You can actually be able to access it. That user experience is very very important to us. The final one is co is communication. Mm -hmm. That you can be customers can be able to co contact us anywhere easily, whether you're on, on, on Instagram or, what's, or, or WhatsApp or Facebook, you know, any of the channels on social media channels, you can actually be able to access us. Uh, and we, we have online real-time conversations with customers. That will continue to get better and better. Uh, the, one th well, the one thing that we've done very, very well that has improved things here uh, you know, at HF is we have digitized a lot of the, uh, the processes we have. HF has got about 54 processes, 54 journeys. You know, order a checkbook, order a standing order, order, you know, a, credit, a card. We have got about 54 of those. And we have digitized the half. And this year we expect to digitize the other half. Okay. Such that wherever you are, you can access the bank fully as if you are inside a branch. That's, that's uh, very impressive, actually, yeah, looking at the range of things, right? So we've talked about the banking, we've talked about the real estate. Now, when we talk about the mortgage, yeah. you know, um, we had housing PS Charles Hinger recently talk about the numbers and say close to 25,000 mortgages, yeah. um, you know, is what Kenyans have taken up. But if we compare it to the population of close to 47 million people, um, it's obviously there's, there's such a gap there. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think that exists to such... Um, a severe degree. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you for that. That's a that's a very good question. So there are there are several things, and, and most of them are actually structural. First, one of them is that access to the houses themselves. Mm. So you've got the houses, but they are actually uh, very very highly priced. So if you move want to buy a, a house worth say five million, you have to go very very far to find it. And so the cost of the house itself is is a deterrent, not just because of the price but also the location if you're gonna spend three hours in the morning getting to work uh, then you can as well just you know rent a house nearby yes Th that's number one the second thing is also the cost the cost in terms of the interest rates interest rates have been primarily high mm -hmm. for a mortgage and also there is we've not had long-term funding meaning that that 
you can actually have rates fluctuating over the life of a mortgage. So if you take a 15-year mortgage, then that, that actually f uh, fluctuates. That, you know, obviously has, has discouraged uh, many people from, from, from taking the mortgages. Uh, and also the processes, you know, both in terms of the cost, the closing cost, and just how painful it is to actually get, get a house. So uh, the government has actually set up, you know, set up a made some progress in actually sol solving that. For instance, Kenya Mortgage Finance Company is going to significantly reduce that. And it's actually moving on pr well. In, in a short while, we should be see that moving. That will lower the cost. And also pro will provide long-term funding that is actually on a fixed rate, which is very, very helpful. The second thing is that there is a lot of projects now coming up in the affordable space. There is the government ones, such as Park Road, but there is a lot of, I know about probably 10,000 houses that are coming up now in the in the affordable space mm. in projects that hf is actually collaborating with with the partners so you'll actually see the unit costs actually come down and then institutions like ourselves are every day working on the, ineffi on, on the efficiency to reduce the pain of owning a house so that we have created now what we are calling a one-stop shop when you come into hf you can you can access the lawyers the valuers everyone you need to actually be able to get your house mm. so that that process becomes easy, fast, and painless. That, that's really what we, 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 are, we are doing. And like you've mentioned, the affordable housing space, and yeah. of course we know it's part of the President's Big Four Agenda. Yeah. Um, the aim of having 500,000 units yeah. you know, done by 2022, we've seen about 228 from yeah. contractors delivered yeah. um, thus far, and we're seeing that a one bedroom will cost one million, two bedroom, two million, three bedroom, five million. Will, do you think we're really going to, in your opinion, of course, having been in this space, that we're going to hit that mark by 2022 of the 500,000 units? The answer is no. Yeah. The answer is no uh, in terms of availability of the houses themselves. Um, what I must say is that I think that we also, all of us underestimated how much needed to be done first of all, uh, either from a policy point of view or just enabling, the, you know, creating the, the right business environment to be able to operate to actually bring to on life on online 500,000 houses uh, the government to be fair has done quite well obviously it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult system uh, and for instance the tax changes we saw happening in the, the previous finance bill for uh, you, the setup of the Kenya mortgage finance company the work that uh, the PS housing is actually doing to just be able to support companies that are coming into the into the housing space uh, with the obviously classification of, 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 of uh, projects as affordable housing, the tax incentives there. Eventually you'll see actually that picking off, but the amount of background work that needed to be done before was, was huge. Mm -hmm. And it's still not yet done. Uh, so we are, in the, we are still in very early stages, but I actually expect that in the next three, four years, you'll begin to see now us getting into the 200,000, then 300,000, then over time we can actually be able to get there. Okay, yeah. so considering that the current housing deficit is close to 2 million, yeah. increasing by 200,000 yearly, you know, we, we have to be proactive. So perhaps <laughs> this foundation is, um, you is know, important. supposed to, yes, is yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. Um, so even, even as we talk about that, uh, the real estate sector, you know, we've seen this, um, a lot of people have said it's in a slump, yeah. so to speak, yeah. over the last few years. What's your take on that and perhaps the future of this space as well, how you see it now and what we can expect in the next couple of years. Okay. Yeah, th there, there, are, there are some, some, some challenges with the real, real estate sector and, and they are not, the real estate sector is actually as a whole not in trouble. It doesn't mean that the entire sector is affected. If you look at, for instance, the affordable homes, uh, so, uh, the affordable family home ownership, uh, there is a huge demand in that space. We see that every day. Like, for instance, HF has had projects that are within the affordable space, home ownership, and we have seen actually there is, there is more demand that we can actually supply. But we also have now the high end of the market. Mm -hmm. The high end of the market is where real problems are. The, the, you know, the Kilimanjaro, not even, even middle to high end, from Kileleshua, Kilimani, all the way to, to Karen and, and other places. There, there is real challenges. Selling a house is quite difficult because the, the demand is really isn't there. Uh, but when you come also to project finance, also some challenges there, you know, in terms of financing projects. So what we are doing at HF is that we have actually then two things. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have adjusted our focus. We are focusing now on uh, enabling 
families to own homes, but in the affordable space, because we there is an opportunity there for sure, uh, and we are not we are not doing a lot in the high end and the end. We, the, the thing I am happy about is that even previously, the projects we had, the reason why we've been able to recover pretty quickly is because the projects we had were never, were not high-end. They were in places like Comorock, in Kamiti, in Dagureti. You know, they were not expensive projects. So we have actually still been able to, to sell, you know, mm -hmm. over time. But you're right, there are, there are challenges, but in specific pockets of, of the real estate sector. So we can't look at you. We can't exactly, you know, take one brush and yes, and say everything. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, if we talk about certain sectors, then would you say there's a glut in specific areas whereby then there's oversupply and now they're sitting empty because people cannot afford yeah. it at this particular time? Yes, there is a glut in some particular sub segment of of the of the of the sector, and there is also undersupply in certain segments mm. you know of the, of the sector and then also those policy policy um, interventions by the government uh, are also very very helpful because also uh, what causes that is also that th the reality also building a five million house anywhere near near the city is difficult you know is difficult so people have to go really really far so there is a lot of structural ch uh, structural challenges that we need to solve before we can actually be able to get solve this problem Okay, and yeah. away from that, if we talk about land ownership, yeah. um, how do you see the current trend? Because we've seen in the past people being very apprehensive when mm. it comes to land ownership simply because of the legitimacy of documents. And, you know, the, the, a lot of people have been burned, so to speak, yeah. with, with um, these uh, kinds of people who are operating as, as if they're legitimate, but obviously they're mm. not, in the papers and whatnot. Do you think we've come, um, you know, a certain way to ensuring that people who want to own land and then build a house and things like that have some sort of security from uh, the kind of con men or women there might be out there yeah okay first of all you know the we, that plot boom you know is 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 is, is, is not there anymore mm. uh, where you had all these 50 by hundreds being sold by everyone everywhere yeah uh, and so there are these you know the, the people who are still buying land are much more you'd say careful and also people also have land lessons you know a lot of people have lost money in this area but what I always encourage people to do is that is deal with credible people. It can actually be probably sometimes expensive. If you buy a property with HF, whether a house or a plot or whatever it is, you are unlikely to lose your money. We've not had a single project demolished, you know, from the time we've, we started building. And currently we've had, last year we had 62 projects. Not even one was demolished, you know. Uh, so there is, or, or had any issues. So it's good to deal with a credible organization. Otherwise, it's very hard. Even people who advertise in newspapers can be crooks, you know. It's very hard to tell who is honest and who is not. All right, so if we talk about your strategy, you know, tell me a little bit more on the strategy that will power HF Group's growth over the next few years. Okay. Over the next few years, um, HF is going to evolve into a full-service bank. Uh, we are going to still be a leader in mortgage, but we'll move a little bit off the traditional mortgage to financing uh, of, of family homes in the affordable space. Mm -hmm. uh, we will also continue to grow our engines of growth, uh, we, what we're calling uh, engines of growth within the SME space, within the personal banking space, and, uh, and, and certain such sub segments such as uh, diaspora. Uh, in essence, we want to be a, a very niche bank where we, we pick, say, for instance, the ex SME sector, and then we, we are focusing on just specific sub, sub, sub sectors in that space. Mm -hmm. All that we will operate within what we are calling uh, digital first, which is basically to d build digital solutions within our chosen segment so that we can make it easier for customers to be able to do business with us. But essentially, besides mortgages, we will continue to build our full service bank proposition. All right. Yeah. So even as we wrap up, of course, we do know that HF um, successfully redeemed the three billion shilling bond in October yeah. 2019. Um, so just your final word for uh, investors out there, shareholders, and uh, what you can say to them to expect from HF Group. Okay. First of all, we were very, very happy to have be, uh, redeemed the bond. Um, we took that money about seven years ago, and it really, really supported the bank to grow uh, because, you know, we... Let's not forget that it's just 2018 that we had difficulty in the, in the real estate sector. Mm -hmm. uh, 20, so part of 2018 and 2019. Otherwise, the sector was booming. 
and and over those five or towards six years, actually HF did benefit significantly from the money that this this uh, this bond. But enter the rate cap, and uh, of course the challenges within the real estate sector. That money now then became expensive for us because we were paying at thirteen percent. Remember, we had taken it before rate cap. Before yes. Uh, and so we were very, very eager to pay, you know, when it came to pay. And we are happy we were able to pay. And the investors actually did benefit significantly from that, from the returns that we are offering then. I think that the, the, bond, the, 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 the corporate bond market is still going to, to, to face some, some challenges because, unfortunately, there are a few companies that have not, been paid, have not paid up, which gives it, uh, th that market a bad name. Mm. Uh, but, I, but I say, from a HF point of view, investors pl uh, wanting to invest in HF, in whatever way, we see a bright future. We have, we have, we have um, I believe, actually, we are, we, are, we are out of the woods. We have a clear vision on where, of where we are going as an organization. We see huge opportunities in the spaces we are playing. And, uh, and, and, and we, we, can, we can say that you know, investing in HF is, is, is still a very good uh, decision. All right. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. And of course, thank all you. your insights as thank well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much.